Night fell, and a thick fog rose up from the sea. The moon's gleam disappeared from the sky, and the fleet sailed through the murky blackness. Then, without any warning, there was a grinding scrape, and the ship shuddered to a halt. I clapped my mouth shut, ready to meet the salty waves. Instead, my breath was knocked out of me as I hit not sea, but land. To my astonishment, I found myself lying on a soft, sandy beach. We've landed perfectly, I said. I shouted to my friends. Some god must have guided us to this place. The rest of the fleet were so close behind us, and soon the beach was crowded with men. Lads, I called. Let's not wander out of this fog. It's too thick to see past our noses. We'll sleep here tonight. In the morning, we'll find out what sort of island this is. The next day dawned, bright and clear, and I set out with 12 of my men to explore the island. For some reason, I felt a dim foreboding as I took with me a goatskin full of my best wine. Before we'd gone far, we came to a cave in the cliffs. The entrance, a yawning, craggy mouth. It was a home fit for a giant. Hello, I called into the cave. We are strangers, newly arrived to your island. We come bearing gifts. There was no reply. No one's home, replied Yuri Locus. Let's take a look inside, I said. Perhaps we'll learn something about who lives here. Cautiously, I led my men into the cave. It was dark inside. Darkness filled with a sour smell of goats. Our eyes adjusted to the gloom and we marveled at what we'd found. Look at that cheese, Yuri Locus said. It must be the size of a cartwheel. And this milk bowl, a man could drown in it. There were goats in here the size of ponies, I shouted over the men. Yuri Locus called back. Come on, let's take a look and take what we can and then get going. Let's get out of here. We lit a fire, and while my men helped themselves with some cheese, I settled down to wait. Night was falling. And by the time I had heard anything, first came the loud stomping of feet, then the bleeding of sheep, and the rattle of hooves on the rocks. And then the cave went dark, and we looked back to see a giant figure blocking the entrance. He was more like a mountain than a man. A forest of hair covered his body. His bald head jutted up like a stone peak, but most terrifying of all was he had only one eye, round and glaring at the middle of his ugly forehead. Before we could even think about fleeing, the monster stepped into the cave, turned and rolled a boulder across the entrance. It was a colossal rock the size of a house. The whole herd of strong oxen couldn't have dragged it away, let alone a dozen men. We were trapped. Strangers, how did you get here? I could feel the lads trembling beside me. We're Greeks, I began, and we're on our way home from Troy. We've been blown far off course and we're here as your guests in need of shelter. I know you won't forget the ancient laws of hospitality. Zeus, king of the gods, demands that all hosts. The Cyclops threw his head back and roared with laughter. Zeus, he said, ancient laws of ha 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 ha. Do you think I'm afraid of Zeus? I am a Cyclops. We Cyclopses don't fear the gods. <laughs> Why should we? <laughs> As if to prove his point, the Cyclops picked up three of the pine trees and put them on the fire. He blew on the embers till the flames caught hold and grew to an enormous crackling bonfire. Supper time soon, the Cyclops said, with a grin eyeing the men cowering in the flickering light. Then, without a word, he jumped up and seized two of my men, dashed their heads on the stone floor, and shoved them into his mouth. <laughs> we could do nothing but watch him, paralyzed with horror. The remaining men wept and prayed, each one dreading that he would be next. But after he'd swallowed two of the men, the Cyclops picked up one of the huge bowls of milk and glugged it down. <laughs> and after drinking it all, he stretched himself out on the floor and he began to snore. Do you think he's asleep? Someone asked. I nodded my head. I had my hand on my sword hilt. Let's kill him. Eurylochus hissed. Now, before he wakes up and gobbles more of us up. I began to draw my sword, but before it was halfway out of his scabbard, it shook my head. 
Look at that boulder, I said. We'll never move it ourselves. If we kill the Cyclops, we'll never escape. There must be another way. At night, I racked my brains for a plan to outwit the Cyclops. The next morning, the Cyclops stoked up the fire, he milked his sheep and goats, and then he came and seized two more of our number. Again, he washed them down with a bowl of milk while the rest of us quaked in the flickering shadows. Once he'd finished his breakfast, he rolled aside the boulder with ease and he drove his flock out through the pasture and he replaced the boulder before he left, neatly sealing us inside. The men let out moans of Who'd be picked off two by two? I'd rather die and see them by so this. I got down on my knees and I prayed. I said, Dear God, Athena, I need all my cunning and more today. Please help me devise a plan to escape the clutches of the Cyclops and to avenge my brethren. I need it. Please help me. And just as I prayed, a burning fire log fell from the fire and came rolling across the floor toward me. It was huge and one end was glowing like a flaming spear. I looked from the enormous log to the enormous boulder sealing the door. I had a plan. Man, quick, help me drag this log to the corner next to the hearth. After we'd hold into position, we could do nothing but wait. That evening, the Cyclops returned with his flocks. Once more, he rolled away the boulder across the entrance. He strode past us and settled down to milk his goats. There was only seven of us left, and we were terrified out of our wits. Cyclops! I said. The monster looked down at me and grunted. I tried to keep my voice as steady as I could. Here, Cyclops, I said, I have some wine for you. I'm offering it in the hope that it would make you merciful. It is the finest wine you'll ever taste. I'll take whatever I want from you, puny little man. The Cyclops roared. He snatched a bowl and began to drink. <laughs> This was no ordinary wine. It was given to me by a priest of the god Apollo. Just a sniff of it was enough to make a man think he was in heaven. A single cup mixed with plenty of water was enough for a long night's feasting. Cyclops drained the bowl to the last drop. That wasn't bad, he slurred. Not bad at all. Give me more. Of course, I said. I filled the Cyclops bowl with more wine three more times. Tell me your name, little man, and I'll give you a gift. I'll tell you my name, Cyclops, I said. It's an odd name. It's what my parents named me. My name is Nobody. Nobody, said Cyclops. Yes, I said. And now that I've told you, why don't you give me that gift you promised me? Oh, yes. Cyclops grinned, showing his gruesome teeth. My gift is this. I'll eat the rest of you first. And nobody that. The monstrous giant let out a cruel laugh and toppled sideways and crashed onto the floor. He lay there snoring. Ha, now we'll see who has the last laugh, I said. Then taking my three strongest men, I ran over to the huge log we had left on the hearth. The tip was in the embers of the fire. And just as I had planned, the sharp tip of the branch glowed red hot. We picked up the log and ran over to where the sleeping Cyclops lay. Now, I shouted, and with a mighty thrust, we drove the branch deep into the eye of the sleeping giant. I pushed with all my weight and I twisted as if I was drilling a hole into the timbers of the ship. There was a terrible hissing sound and the shriek of the Cyclops was more terrible still. We scrambled backwards as he struggled to his feet. He hurled it away in a frenzy and began staggering around the cave and shrieking in agony and flailing his arms and trying to catch us. We watched, keeping safely out of reach. Then we heard a knock at the boulder of the sealed entrance. Polymephans! A deep voice like the sound of an avalanche boomed through the cave. What's the matter? Small Cyclops. Small Cyclops! breathed Yuri Locus, petrified. What's your brilliant plan now, Odysseus? Wait and see, I replied. Whimpering in agony, the Cyclops replied to his friends. There's nobody, he cried. Nobody heard me. Well then, 
If nobody's hurting you, then you just must, must be sick or something. Have you been drinking polymorphic? No, you don't understand. Nobody has tricked me. <laughs> and off they went, leaving Polymorphus all alone. While I laughed to myself at how well the trick had played out. Now Polymorphus the Cyclops, still moaning in pain, groped his way over to the cave's entrance. He pushed the rock to make a narrow opening. Some of the men scrambled forward, but I pulled them back. Wait, I whispered, it's a trick. He wants to catch us slipping out, I whispered, but I know how we'll trick him. We're gonna need some rope. Taking a length of woven willow, I tied it together with three big fat rams. You first, Yuri Locust, I said. What am I supposed to do? Said Yuri Locust with a doubtful look. I'll tie you onto the middle ram, I said. His look was aghast. You want to tie me to a sheep? Exactly. And hold on tight. But what happens then? Said Yuri Locust. Then if the gods are willing, we escape. So I tied each of my men under a ram, and for myself, I chose the mightiest one in the lot, a magnificent beast the size of a small horse. <sighs> I'll hammer you out. I'll smash your brain. Once we were a safe distance away, I let myself fall to the ground and then ran to untie the others. We raced to the ships. Let's get the flocks aboard the ships and put to sea at once. And then I did something that would change the course of my life. Looking back to the island as we sailed away, I was filled with rage and I shouted at the top of my voice, Cyclops! You called me little man! Eat me last, you said. Well, how puny do I think I am now? You should have feared Zeus, because he's paying you back, you brute, for devouring your guests. The Cyclops appeared on the cliff top with a great gory hole in his forehead instead of an eye. He tore off the pinnacle of a rock and tossed it out to sea. It fell just ahead of our ship's bows and threw up such a wave that we were swept back onto the beach. Without saying a word, my men bent down to their oars, dipping them quietly as they could. Pulling hard, they got us clear of the beach once. I lied about my name. You were stupid enough to believe me. But if anybody asks who blinded you, you can tell them it was Odysseus, the sacker of cities, the king of Mythicals. lifted his blind eye to the heavens, his huge limbs shaking with rage. Hear me, Poseidon! My father, I pray that Odysseus, king of Ithaca, may never get home. Father, I beg you, destroy his ships. If he ever does get home, may his home be full of deadly enemies. Then the Cyclops picked up another great boulder and hurled it towards the ship. But this time, the rock fell behind us. The enormous wave it threw carried us out to sea. I thought then that we were finally out of danger. How wrong I was, for Poseidon had heard his son's prayer and was already brewing his plan.